Well, good evening. Here it is Wednesday again. Happy to share with you a few minutes from God's Word on this Wednesday evening. I think we ought to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for another Wednesday evening. Oh, how we wish, Lord, that our Wednesday night crowd could be here standing before us, but we want to make the best of it, Lord, by sharing God's words through the technology that we have. And we pray, Lord, that those that should choose to uh, tune in to the Lighthouse Chapel ministry tonight, Lord, that they will find help and be blessed. We know, Lord, that there's always help and there's always blessing in being in your presence. There's always help and blessing in opening your word. And certainly there's help and blessing in living in obedience to your word. Lord, we pray that thou will bless your people. We're going through kind of a tough time, Lord. A lot of people are experiencing a lot of different difficulties. And Lord, we just pray that you will be with your people tonight in a very special way. Down across the years, Lord, there's been tough times, and yet you've always proved yourself to be the faithful God. And we know that you're going to continue to be faithful because the Bible tells us that you are the Lord God, and you said it yourself, I am the Lord God, and I change not. And we know, dear Lord, that uh, you cannot be less than faithful because you are God, and your word is settled. So we pray that that would help us, Lord, to rest confident in the faithfulness of God, you'll be faithful, Lord, to see us through whatever it is that we're going through. We thank thee, Lord, for the, the help that you've given us down to this present time. And we ask thee that you'll just help us to continue to trust in God. Be with those of our congregation that are going through a time of sickness, Lord. Our heart goes out to those that are battling with the dreaded sea uh, word. Lord, those that are taking chemo, those that are taking other treatment for uh, this uh, cancer, we pray that that will be with them. We pray, thee, Lord, that you'll be with others that are suffering in uh, physical ways. It seems like that you don't have to have a big congregation to have several people that are suffering in some way. And the Lighthouse Chapel congregation is no exception. You know those that need your physical touch and your courage and strength. Pray thee, Lord, that thou would not only bless the Lighthouse Chapel people, but you bless your people everywhere, those that are true to the word and seeking to do God's will. We pray, Lord, that your blessing will rest upon them. Bless the word of God as we share it here in the next few minutes. May it be a blessing. We help, uh, we ask you in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I don't know how long we'll be tonight. I, uh, it's that time of the year, I'm experiencing these allergy problems, and uh, it affects my voice quite a bit. But uh, we'll go until we run down, and then we'll uh, let you go. But the last several weeks on Wednesday night, we've been talking about people who should be praying. Back in Genesis 4.26, makes reference that uh, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So we know that uh, praying has been going on for a long, long time. Jeremiah the prophet uh, said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So at the beginning of our study, where well, we looked at different Old Testament characters that prayed and something happened. And uh, we know that they're numerous. There's just a lot of things that uh, came to pass, a lot of victories that were won, a lot of things that uh, accomplished God's purpose because men prayed. And then, of course, the New Testament church, it was known as a praying church. Uh, when they prayed, the place was shaken, the Bible says, in one place. So we know that the New Testament church experienced the power of prayer. They knew what it was to pray and to have an answer to their prayer. Then we've known people down across the years, people that perhaps have been known as real prayer warriors. We don't hear that term or that uh, a moniker attached to too many modern day Christians, but 
some of the older Christians that we have known, they just kind of had a reputation being a prayer warrior. They knew how to pray heaven and earth together, as the uh, old saying uh, goes. And things happened when they prayed. A little motto that we grew up with, um, prayer changes things. And I do believe that surely still the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So we can have answers to prayer today. And uh, there's no reason why we can't call upon the Lord because his word exhorts us to. And certainly God encourages us to call upon him. So we think about prayer and who should be prayed. First, the ones we talked about, that person that's in trouble. And we seem to have our share of trouble sometimes, often of our own making, other times just part of life in an imperfect world. But troubles come our way. Job said, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. And yet the Bible says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. And God does say, call upon me in the time of trouble, and I will answer. So people that are in trouble ought to pray. That person that needs wisdom ought to pray. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. How often we need divine wisdom as we journey through this wilderness world. Then people that need power or need to be strengthened ought to pray. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so we consider if God gave you a task beyond your ability, Talk to him about it. God will empower you. If uh, you're uh, facing some storms in your life, having a hard time withstanding the storm, you certainly ought to be praying that God will strengthen. Prayer will strengthen us and prayer will stabilize us. It's the man that neglects prayer that doesn't stand in the face of the storms of life. And so there are times that we need to be empowered. There are times that we need to be strengthened. And the secret of it is, is to call upon God, put our faith and our trust in Him. And I know that God always has a sufficient grace that will strengthen us, that will stabilize us, that will help us to be true and faithful. So we know that uh, people that that uh, uh, are needing empowerment or strength ought to pray. Then that person, as we considered last week, that person that has unsaved family and friends. And who of us do not have uh, those of our loved ones, perhaps as close family members, extended family, and certainly friends and neighbors and co-workers that we've developed a relationship with and we have a concern for their never dying soul. Well, if you have unsaved loved ones, you owe it to them to pray for them. Oftentimes it's about the only thing we can do is to pray for them. But I guarantee you that God will be faithful to speak to the lost if we pray and ask him to. God can uh, bring a conviction upon them. The old time saints that I grew up with, they'd pray, Oh Lord, take their appetite. Oh Lord, keep them awake at night. Oh Lord, bring about a spirit of conviction that'll make them miserable. And God can do that. And a person gets miserable enough, then perhaps he will begin to call upon the Lord for salvation. But there's another person that I want to mention uh, tonight that ought to pray, and that's the person that really wants to know God's way. You know, Moses prayed, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, 
and consider that this nation is thy people. Show me now thy way. I was reading only today in the book of Psalms, where it tells us that uh, we're to give thanks unto the Lord. Psalm 107, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the land from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of all their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. And so, you know, there's only, uh, not, not, God's way is not only the best way, God's way is the only way if we're going to find happiness and contentment and fulfillment, if we're going to have the uh, communion and uh, fellowship with God that we yearn for, if we're going to have the assurance of heaven, well, we've got to do it God's way. The Bible says all of a man's ways are right in his own eyes. And so we dare not trust and what we think is the way to go. I've made some terrible decisions in my life. I've uh, m made uh, the wrong turn and, and gotten in trouble because of it. But I'm here to tell you today that people that want to know God's way ought to pray because as the psalmist promised, that will show me the path of life. That will lead me into the paths of righteousness. And, and you know, right living is God's way. God wants us to live right. And if we want to know God's way, well, we pray and we ask God to show us his way. Of course, if you get into the word, he'll reveal it to you in that way. But how many times do we need to just rely upon the blessed Holy Spirit to uh, show us the right way? to make the decisions that are crucial to our spiritual well-being, to make the decisions that will lead us in a direction where we can be useful to God. As long as we're going our own way, God probably will never find a, any use for us in the work of the kingdom. If we're going in our own way, uh, we're probably going away from God instead of drawing closer to God. We've got to find God's way. God's way is so carefully outlined to us, and yet we need to pray that the blessed Holy Spirit will enlighten our path. Uh, thy word is a light unto my uh, feet, and uh, 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 thy word is a light unto my path, and, uh, and a light unto my feet. I, I know that verse. I'm just stumbling with it here. Because it just came to my mind real quick there. But uh, the word of God. And if we pray and ask God to reveal through his word. God will certainly do that. So people that want to know God's way. People that want God's best for their life. And I can tell you that, that uh, like I say. It's not just the best way, it's the only way. If we're going to uh, be useful to God, if we're going to find fellowship and communion, we're going to have an assurance of heaven, we've got to know the way to go. And God will show us his way. I think of the children of Israel. You know, they're kind of a symbolic or a type of the uh, Christian today. They were going through the wilderness trying to get to the promised land, and that's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? Going through the wilderness of this world, trying to get to the promised land, and I think about how God led them all the way. There was a, a cloud by day, and when the cloud moved, they moved. There's a pillar of fire by night. When it moved, they moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped. When the pillar of fire stopped, they stopped. They let, let God lead them. And I think that's what Moses was doing. Show me now thy way, O Lord. And I know that as he led the children of Israel from bondage 
unto the promised land that he was continually praying and asking God to give direction and to give uh, the help that he needed. And we've got to have help if we're going to navigate ourselves through this wilderness world today. We simply have to believe that God will show us the way that we ought to go. So people that want to know God's way, want the best way and the only way, just pray. God will lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so I want to know God's way. I want to walk in his way. I want to be found faithful. So I pray that God will show me his way. I want to be found right in the center of God's will. I've heard it said from a, from being a young man that uh, outside of the will of God, there is no success. Inside of the will of God, there is no failure. And if God will show us his way and lead us into his will, uh, you can't be a failure. You're going to win. And I want to be a winner because God shows me his way. Walk in the ways of the Lord. Follow the word of God. Uh, obey the will of God. And I believe that God will be faithful, but we need to pray that God will reveal his way to us. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. Every one of us needs to pray. The Bible said men ought always to pray and not to faint. And Lord, we know that you can help us in every situation that we're in if we'll call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon, call upon me. I will show thee great and mighty things. And one of the things you want to show us is the way that we ought to go. Bless each one of our lives. Keep us true and faithful. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I'll plan to see Sunday here on the uh, Lighthouse Ministry. And for trusting God will bless you and keep you. Have a good evening.